If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me again to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. <clears throat> and notice the word better here. Over and over again. A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. Hmm. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of fasting. For that is the end of all men. And the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of merit. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot so is the laughter of the fool. This is also vanity. Surely oppressing, oppression make a wise man mad, and a gift destroys the heart. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in the spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resists Rest us in the bosom of fools. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. Almighty God, how we thank you and how we praise you for this opportunity to be here again tonight. And I pray that we've come for no other purpose but to worship you in spirit and truth. Father, in the next few moments, just help us to get our eyes up off the things of this world, things that seem to be tearing our country and people apart, and to look full in your wonderful face. And when we do, the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Oh God, I pray that you'll take each one of us, use us, use us in a mighty way. Wherever we go, whatever we do, people will see the Lord Jesus Christ in us. Forgive us, Father, where we failed you, where we failed in the past, but help us, Lord God, to be better in the future. We pray, we ask all of this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Well, <clears throat> I think you noticed already the, be the word better is a key word in this chapter. It is used at least 11 times. And his listeners must have really been shocked when they heard Solomon describe the better things that come to a life of a person who follows God's wisdom. Now, first of all, you notice he says, sorrow is better than laughter in verses 1 through 4. Like, given a choice, most people would rather go to a birthday party than to a funeral. Amen. Right? Amen. <laughs> but Solomon advised against it. I think this is really interesting. Why? Because he says, sorrow can do more good for the heart than laughter. Did you know that? <laughs> now, he, he was not a man with a gloomy lifestyle, Solomon. You know, he, he the same person who wrote the song of Solomon, there he said laughter can be, a, a, be like medicine that heals the broken heart. But he says also that sorrow can be like nourishing food that strengthen the inner person. Now, you know, I think you understand what he's saying. Uh, you go out, you laugh, you have a great time and all that. It doesn't strengthen you very much, does it? But 
If you have to go through sorrow, I tell you something, it'll strengthen you, help you to become a better person. You see, this is what Solomon talks about, the balanced life. And this, it takes both of these to have a balanced life. You're going to have laughter. You're going to have sorrow. All of this, you know, is what a balanced life is made up of. Few, <clears throat> few people realize it. There's a time to laugh and there is a time to cry. You know, a lot of people try to laugh when they ought to be crying or cry when they ought to be laughing. Now he's not, listen, Solomon is not contrasting birth and death, nor was he suggesting it is better to die than to be born. He's just simply contrasting the significance of the days in a human experience. You see, the day when he or her receives his or her name, and that day when the name shows up in the obituary, now, here's the thing about it. What about the life that is lived between birth and death? These two events will determine if a man or if a name leaves behind a sweet, sweet-smelling fragrance or a foul stench. You know, if a person dies with a good name, well, his reputation is already sealed. And the family need not worry. In that sense, you see, the day of one's death is better than the day of his birth. His life, a person's life is over, and his reputation is settled. I don't know about you, but I, I read the obituary sometimes, don't you? Some of them. Well, I'm telling you, some of them go on forever. This guy, he's done this and done that and been here and been there. And all those things. I think the old Westerns had it right. They just put on the stoom to was shot by somebody or whatever. <laughs> you know, that's your life. That what, that's what it's about. So what Psalm is saying is that when you come to the time of death, what is people are going to say? What are they going to remember about you? Is it going to be a sweet-smelling fragrance? Or will people just turn up a nose and say, oh, glad that she's gone, glad he's gone? Now let me just add this to you. Every child of God ought to live their lives in a way that when they pass away from this old earth and go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ that the people that are left behind would say, oh, they were a super sweet individual. You see, that's it. You live your life. You live your life in a way that would, even in death, would bring people to the Lord Jesus Christ. I've had funerals, and when they, in the funeral, <laughs> when, well, we had one here uh, a couple of years ago, and how wonderful it was to just simply stand up and say, this individual is with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to celebrate her life. You know who I'm talking about. Don't you? She played that old piano there, by the way, to it. I mean, you think it rocks and rolls. She can really... Well, she knew what she was doing when he came to the PN. Bless her heart. And, and you know what? The people, everybody would say to me, what a wonderful, sweet lady she was. Hey, you know, it just, and I hope and pray that when you leave this old world, they say that about you. I hope they don't say, well, glad he's gone. <laughs> well, here's the thing about it, don't you? You know, every man has three names. 
the one that your parents give you, the one other people call you. It's interesting sometimes, you know. Your name may be Jake or John or whatever, and people may call you everything under the sun. That comes from a name that you acquire yourself. As you live out your life, you know, people will form an opinion of you. And they'll begin to talk in a way either good or bad. Yes, that's true, you see. Proverbs 10, 7 says, The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. My goodness. I think you want your name to be blessed, not, not to rot. I think, remember Mary, she anointed Jesus' feet with this expensive perfume. And Jesus said to her, your name will be honored throughout the world. And it is and still is to this day. Let me tell you about someone else. His name was Judas. He sold our Lord for 30 pieces of silver. You don't hear much about the name of Judas, do you? <coughs> People, you see, he, his name is despised everywhere. Even people who don't even know what, what he did, they despise his name. No one names your children Judas. I don't think you do. I, I haven't run into anyone that did. But in our crazy day and time, probably somebody will. <laughs> you see. Now, Solomon here also advises people not to look death in the face, or, excuse me, to look death in the face and learn from it. You know, now he's not saying that we should be preoccupied with death. But death is a reality. And we should remember it. Psalms 90, 12 says, Teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. We need a... <clears throat> We need, really, we need some healthy humor in our lives. But when people jest about death, uh, I don't know. I, I feel that they're not really prepared to meet death. People, yeah, people make fun, you know, of death and blah, blah, all of that stuff. But it is something that we're all going to face unless the Lord Jesus Christ comes. And we need to give it some thought. We need to number our days and apply our hearts unto wisdom and live that kind of life. Verses 5 and 6, he says, Rebuke is better than praise. Whoa, what? Rebuke is better than praise? Now he compares here the praise of fools as burning thorns at a campfire. I don't know where you ever burn any thorns or not, but I have. You throw those thorns on the, on the fire and all they do is crackle and pop. Don't put out any heat or anything. Just make a lot of noise. Well, maybe I shouldn't say it, but I will. Just like a lot of Christians. You'll forgive me, won't you? A lot of Christians, see, they don't put out any heat. They don't do a lot, do they? Just make a lot of noise. Well, that's what thorns do. <clears throat> you, you hear a lot of noise, you don't get a lot of lasting good out of it. A wise person's rebuke will accomplish far more than the flattery of a fool. 
a wise person can rebuke you and it'll do them far more good than for a fool to just keep talking about how great you are, how we are, you know, all that. Then he says in verses 7 through 9 that the long haul is better than a shortcut. All of you understand that, don't you? I remember one time we left here. We were going to North Carolina to see our son. He was over in uh, uh, on the Outer Banks there. And so we were going up to see him. And uh, I looked at the map and I said, here's a shortcut. We go right up through Georgia. We go right over here and, you know, let's get off of this 95 and get on that bank. Well, three days later, we moved. <laughs> that shortcut didn't work. We went through little towns and just four or five houses and four red lights. I mean, we, <laughs> I didn't think we was ever going to get there. Road went this way, that way, everyone. So this is what he's saying here. The long haul is better than taking a shortcut. Beware of the easy route that often becomes even far more expensive too. I'm sure most of you, some of you guys who drove trucks and all, you've had that experience, you know, <laughs> of getting off the main highway, getting off on some little road going here and yon and everywhere. <clears throat> you know, the thing about it is he says here again, that bribery seems as a quick way to get things done. But it turns a wise man into a fool and encourages corruption that's already in the heart. You're to, it's better to wait patiently and humbly for God to work. For God to work out His will than to get angry and demand your own way. Oh, man, how many people have you seen get, you know, they get angry, get upset. They want to have things their way. They're absolutely sure that their way is better than anybody else's way. What we need to do is really trust God and make sure that we're going His way, not our own way, you know. Better is the end of things, he says, in the beginning. Well, of course, this applies when we are living according to God's wisdom. The beginning of sin always leads to a terrible end. Always. You know, <clears throat> but if God is the beginning of what we do, then we know that it will be one wonderful experience. He will see to it that we reach the end successfully. If we're doing His will, going His way, we will reach the end successfully. God is a work accomplished in His purpose, but He wants you and I to get on board with Him. Sometimes we fail to see what is good. Remember the prodigal son? <clears throat> Somebody remember it, don't you? Hey, he left home with a pocket full of money. His dad just gave it to him. Went off and he had a ball. Boy, I'm telling you. Things went great until he ran out of money. How many people have, you, have, you, have done just the same thing? I, I hate to tell you old time stories, but I will. In Cleveland, Ohio, I got a call to go to the prison. And I thought, my goodness, what is this all about? A young man wanted to see the pastor of the church from the south. How you got all that, I don't know. But I went to see this young man. His story sounded so much like the prodigal son. He said, you know what? 
man, I left home. I, you know, everything's great. I came up here, I got a job, I'm working, everything's going good. Had a few drinks, got with my buddies. You know, we had a lot of fun, enjoyed life. But he said, you know what? I got fired. Now, he never told me why he got fired, but probably because he was having too much fun. And I got fired. And I got in trouble. What had happened, he had uh, got caught driving drunk, and he was in the, they took him into the prison. And I said, well, why did you call me? He said, I want to talk to a preacher. And he said, I heard somebody said that you're from down south. Why won't somebody from south? I don't know. But anyway, so I, Shared the good Lord with him. He told me he was already a Christian and he just got off on the wrong track. He'd listened to Satan, he hadn't listened to the Lord. By the way, this young man eventually got out of prison and he went back south. And I pray that wherever he went, whatever, he's really, truly living the Lord. But think about that. Think about the prodigal son. But think also about a man named Joseph. Remember Joseph? Joseph was sold as a slave. But you know what he became? He became the second ruler of the land of Egypt. You know why? Because he stayed with the Lord God all the way. Whatever happened. He stayed with the Lord. And because of that, my, he is made the second ruler of the land. <laughs> Think about it. God had that all planned. Joseph just got in there and did what he knew was right. The last thing that Solomon says here in verse 10 is better today is better than yesterday. What? See somebody shaking your head? Good? Oh. Yeah, that's what he says. Well, when life is difficult, we're looking for a change. It's easy to, re boy, it is easy to remember the good old days and you hear people talk about the good old days. Boy, I remember some good old days, but they weren't so good. You know, <laughs> we, we say, okay, back in, things are better, what have you. That is not always true. You see, what you and I have is the day and we're to live this day for the Lord God. Not in the past, but today, you see. I remember, you remember when the second temple was, was built. It, it's interesting. I, I, I think that's in Ezekiel. Somewhere. But anyway, when the, when the foundation was laid, you know what the old man did? The old man wept. They cried. They cried for the good old days. Good old days. You know what the young men did? They sang. They sang a song of rejoicing because the work of the Lord had begun again. That's what we're doing. It's been said, by the way, someone has said that the good old days or a combination of a bad memory and a good imagination. <laughs> uh, doesn't that sound right? Yep. Yes. <laughs> bad memories and a good imagination. By the way, listen to me now. Yesterday is past. It's gone. It cannot be changed. Tomorrow may not come. Hasn't got here yet. So make the best 
of today. Live today. Make this the best day of your life. Now this does not mean that we shouldn't learn from the past. Yes. Or that we shouldn't make preparation for the future. But here's the thing to do. If we live today and live it in the will of God, I want to tell you, this will be the greatest day of your life. This day, you know, while dreaming of the future, regretting the past and all those things, the present sometimes just slips on by us. But here's the thing. Live today. Live this day for the Lord God Almighty. One of the things that I noticed, you know, people, people want to live in the past. They want to talk about the past and all that. Or they're talking about the future. What's going to be happening, you know, come next month or next year or something else. Listen to me. Today is better than yesterday. If you know the Lord God is your personal Savior. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day. Live your life today. Solomon says, today is better than yesterday. I pray that you'll live your life in a way that when you leave this old world, people will say of you, boy, I want to tell you something. She was the finest Christian woman I've ever known. Oh, he was a man of God. He lived his life for the Lord. I hope that's what they say of me. I don't care what they say he couldn't preach a lick. <laughs> he should have been a put out to pastor and all these things. I don't care. Ah, what I do care about is people say he was a man of God. Yeah. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I pray, Lord God, that each one of us will take the words of Solomon, take them to our hearts. Yes, this is a day, a day that we have, a day that we're living right now. My prayer is that each and every person here is living it for the Lord God. We're not too concerned about the future because if we're ch your children, Lord, we know where we're going. We know what's going to happen. The past is over and done with. It's today that we have. <laughs> so help us, Lord God, to live it for you. And I pray that we'll do just that. And I pray, too, that you'll continue to bless us and watch over us. And ask all this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen.